All right, hello and welcome back to another episode with Sharp Education. Today, we're going to be building on our last episode where we identified inflation expectations. We're going to be back testing a strategy that uses them in harmony with other information that we get from the Federal Reserve Economic Database and Yahoo Finance. Feel free to add any technical indicators that you like on top of what we do today. Today, we're only going to be using economic data to build this trading strategy. I will be visualizing it and we will be testing its effectiveness over the entire duration of 30 years of daily S&P 500 data. But again, the purpose of this channel is to give you the tool set to test your own trading strategies. So if you don't like what I did, if you don't like the assumptions I made or the structure of the strategy we built today, it's perfectly fine. What I want you to be able to do is decide it was bad or decide that you want to do something different and simply do that. Remember, I post all of the code in these videos completely for free on the Sharp Research education page. You can just click on the links, fork your code into whatever interface you use by using the GitHub code posted there for free. Yes, so let's get started with continuing on what we started in the last episode where we defined our 10-year risk-free rate according to the treasury bonds and then the treasury inflection treasury inflation protected securities as well tips the difference between these two is the risk-free rate and the most recent one was 2.28 when we made this episode but today it's a little bit later it's a week later so let's run this again to get our updated inflation expectations which probably have changed quite a bit because we've gotten some new information about how the tariffs are impacting the trade deficit well it looks like it's exactly the same well, that's what people are pricing it in to be, 2.28. So nothing nothing too big, nothing, no monumental changes. That's fine. Let's go on to see how these fluctuations in inflation expectations, which are calculated roughly, it's a good estimation and it's used by economists. How do they interact with price movements for the S&P 500? How does this number here impact these returns here? Or is there a relationship at all? We've gone over regression and how to assess a correlation between these values and percent changes here. I'm not going to be looking for a correlation today. I'm going to be doing a simple rules-based strategy that assesses when inflation expectations are higher than their 20-day moving average. Then does that mean, actually, how about we do this? When inflation expectations are higher than inflation, Aha, I like that one. When inflation expectations are higher than inflation, does that mean people are more bearish? Because let's think about this. When inflation expectations are higher than the current inflation, that means that people are necessarily projecting that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates. When you raise interest rates, that makes holding equity less appealing because the cost of capital is more expensive. The weighted the average cost of capital is related to interest rates directly. So when inflation expectations exceed inflation, that means people think that interest rates will come up, meaning the stock market will come down. Is there a relationship between inflation expectations and stock prices returns? That's my hypothesis. And if you think I got it wrong, let me know in the comments. But I think that's a pretty good economic narrative that we now can pretty well understand given the context we started with last episode. And I'm excited to test that out. That seems like a reasonable economic hypothesis that we now have the capacity to test. I understand that some people in the audience might be looking for more basic trading strategies where you see a volume spike or a, I don't know, a head and shoulders pattern, something really simple. If you're just joining us now for these later episodes, I want it to be clear that we've already covered some of those basic strategies or a lot of them in pretty thorough detail and now if you watch back at my other videos those should be questions that you are able to answer yourself hoping that when i watch this back i'm not lagging the whole time if i am that's okay but as long as the audio is good that's all right i need a new computer we are going to make another cell and in this cell we're going to be mentioning we we'll probably keep it in the same cell but let's make a new function so we have inflation expectations now we also have inflation. Now, risk free rate seems to be set up inflation. I need to call this tips. So that was a bad 
bad label by me in the last episode. I'm gonna change that. Add tips because this is the DFI 10. So let's add inflation expectations and inflation. So the frame is going to equal add tips to the data frame. Whoops. And we also want to add inflation. So let's define add inflation to the data frame. And we're going to use the consumer price index to assess inflation. We've done this in a previous episode. The consumer price index measures a basket of goods. And we did this just through taking actually we took CPI in all urban cities, and I don't know what the SL is, but we could find that out pretty quickly. I'm just not going to do that for this episode. Define add inflation. We're just going to paste this right on in. We're just taking the, the annual percent change in inflation from the Federal Reserve Economic Database using the series ID that is, again, posted on the website. If you don't know what that is, take a look at our previous episodes on economic data. These are all going to be sorted into a specific folder on the Sharp Research Education page, so you know exactly where to find it. I recommend watching those before this one because now we're going to have a lot of information. Let's run all this. I also want to plot expected infl inflation versus regular inflation. So plt.plot, and then the name of that title is going to be data frame inflation. And the plt.title title is going to be inflation expectations versus inflation. Great, cool. I'm also gonna add a legend, guilty legend and actual. So this should give us an informative plot when I run everything. We now have our expected inflation column and our inflation column. This is really interesting. So the expectations generally are lower than actual inflation. Uh, this is a known phenomenon in economics and I'm, I'll be honest, I forget why exactly that is, that is the case. But this isn't, that's a general rule of thumb. You underestimate what inflation ends up being. But anyway, we can see the direct relationship here. What we could do is plot the difference between them, but I'm not going to. I think this is a really cool chart, but what we're gonna be doing is when the actual, which is orange, is greater than the expectations. No, when the expectations are greater than the actual. So when this blue line is greater than the orange line, that means that people are necessarily bearish. Because when you expect inflation to be higher, you expect interest rates to come up to account for that. Then you're gonna sell short. So that's gonna be our strategy. Our new trading strategy is going to look like this. Let's define inflation strategy and data frame strategy. And this, again, if you're new to these episodes, this is the same exact structure that we use for every single episode. You load in all of the data you want. You add your technical indicators or additional information, which is what we've done with expected inflation and regular inflation. And then you define your strategy based on the information that you need to work with. Once you've defined your strategy, you test the strategy and you can see how your strategy is going to go before ever losing a dollar deploying it. What a lot of people in this space do is they depend on you not having the ability to test what they're talking to you about. What I do, which is a bit different, is I come up with an idea. Well, I don't come up. I guess I, take, I teach you how to come up with an idea, and then I show you whether or not it works. This is the key difference between the free content I provide with you and the paid content you will, you will encounter most often in this space. So if you're here for the first time, welcome. This is a fun one. I'm actually very excited to see the results here because the narrative I came up with at the beginning of this of the beginning of this episode makes sense. Should actually, in theory, make us some money, but let's find out. Oh, and that's another danger, and I won't I'll stop ranting about it though. Equals numpy where. We're gonna use where function from numpy, parentheses, data frame expected inflation. It's greater than data frame inflation. Then we're gonna be long. Otherwise, we're gonna be short. So one, otherwise negative one. So now we have a new column that is specifically what our strategy is doing. Data frame, return the data frame. Perfect. And I'll add this to the main function. Data frame equals, I'll add this after we drop everything. Drop NA, data frame equals add strategy to the data frame. Oh, what happened? Oh, inflation strategy. 
I'm just going to call it ad strategy to be consistent with our other naming conventions that we have in other other episodes. So ad strategy. And then we're going to, I'll show you what testing the strategy looks like. But first, I'm just going to add the strategy and show you how it looks in our data frame. So you can see that because expected, infl expected inflation was less than inflation, our strategy should be expected inflation is greater than inflation. It should be one otherwise negative what's going on here these should all be ones Maybe the other way around so when we should be short when expected inflation is greater than inflation glad i did a little reality check there and we should be long when expected inflation is less than current inflation because when inflation is coming down that means interest rates can come down with it great so now let's try it again we should see the opposite values in our strategy column and we do usually we're long most of the time we are long where the orange line is over or where the blue line is under most of the time we're long where the expected where the expectations are lower than the actual inflation but when expectations do exceed the the actual inflation rate how does that stack up we're going to get another plot that assesses the cumulative returns of this strategy. We're going to take it from, let's do economic TA, can be anyone. We're going to test the strategy. We can just paste this in because strategy returns is going to be looking at the close percent change and the data frame strategy column. Very consistent across all of our code base here. We'll just paste that right in. And you can do this yourself with any adjustments to this strategy that we've come up with if you don't like my economic narrative you can create your own but generally speaking that's a pretty economically sound idea i've come up with and it looks like i did not add the function i did not so add the strategy and then data frame is going to equal test strategy the data frame and then we'll run everything and that'll wrap up the episode we'll see how this works and that's going to be the whole process we use for building strategies and it's strategies is not oh okay so i need to drop an a at the end here get rid of this super interesting it competes for a little bit but then just because inflation runs away with it doesn't mean or when inflation was really hot here the stock market also did really well because a lot of money was going into the stock market so we can challenge really really quickly a narrative we come up with uh, and that's the whole purpose of this channel I could, at the beginning of this episode, what I could have done was just tell you only buy stocks when inflation expectations are higher than actual inflation. Only do this, and then I could have given you the economic narrative, and it would have made sense to you, and that would have been something you probably sat with for a long time. The purpose of the Sharp Research Education page is to give you a more competitive approach to professional trading. And... What you now have the ability to do is call me on it. You could say, well, it's going to be a little bit difficult to test that claim, but I know how to do it. And I can verify that you are full of bullshit. Nathan, sharp research. You can't just say that. Look at the results. You are negative over the course of 30 years when the S&P 500 has made you 14 times your initial investment. It's the whole purpose of this channel. Any claim that you see about the stock market online, anything that makes it seem simple or easy, anything, you should be able to test. And if you cannot test it, do not listen to it. Do not follow it. And do not pay for anybody who tells you that you need to buy their mentorship. I think content like this is better than any mentorship because it's not going to teach you how to trade like the strategy. Oh, you just need to do what I do and you'll figure it out. You're going to need to do something unique and creative. You're going to need to do something that I might not understand. Professionals might not understand. That's how I finally built a model that outperforms. I did something that nobody has ever seen before. My professors didn't understand it or appreciate the work I was doing. But that's the goal. You need to be able to see something that I, I couldn't see and most people can. And this is the foundation for how you encounter that relationship. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. And if it doesn't, let me know in the comments about what I'm talking about when I say that you need to do something unique. Anybody who tells you that they can, you can just copy them and you just have to pay a lot of money. And if you don't copy them right, that's your own psychological fault. We got to do better than this. But that is, 
That's the whole episode. I thought it was a lot of fun, or generating and testing an economic theory. I do this every day. This is a hobby for me, and I think it's a good one. It lets you have great conversations. I'm starting to rant your ear off, but I hope you enjoyed. And let me know what I should text, test next economically. I want to work specifically with the Federal Reserve Economic Database and Yahoo Finance. Do you think any technical indicators built on top of this might turn this around? I personally don't, but let me know if there's something I might be missing in the comments or reach out to my company email, nathan at sharpresearch.ai for any inquiries. I'm always happy to help. Thanks for sticking around and until next time, stay sharp. <laughs>